or constant stress. So what they do is they put us in a state of constant stress. And that's what they do. Fear becomes the base. The base of keeping power is that every day and every week you need to see a new form of stress. And the media do this beautifully. The media love it. That's what they do for a job. They know what they're doing and they do it very well. They are the promoters of this state of constant stress, constant anxiety to create the bedrock of fear. And that's what they do. Now on that bedrock, then we see the next one. So instead of attack, we now have prejudice. A more sophisticated uh, form and, and certainly more sophisticated than what we would think in terms of hate because prejudice gives us that uh, sense of attack, that sense of negativity, but it also gives us the justification so for prejudice, we need those real or imagined enemies, those real or imagined terrorists, those real or imagined uh, gangs, those real or imagined threats. And that's the prejudice. Well, to escape, what do they do there? Yep, you probably already anticipated what I'm going to say, but for escape, we find fantasy. Drugs, alcohol, food addiction, they're all forms of fantasy, they're all forms of escape, they're all forms of feeding the lower ego to disconnect us from our higher self and our divine self. Fantasy. The next, when we talk of uh, protect, they corrupt our protection. And how do they corrupt protection? They corrupt, corrupt it by promoting greed or jealous envy. So no longer do we protect for a higher ideal, we protect because it's my home, my car, my computer, my money. It's not our money, it's not our family, it's not our community, it's mine. And of course, when we justify it, what we say to people and what we claim is, it's ours, no. The emotion in many cases of people saying, I've got these guns because I'm protecting my home. Greed and jealous envy. Lower ego is promoting that. It's not a higher ideal. And the fifth, when we spoke of arousal, they turned arousal to lust, to portray in mind, and more specifically, pornographic sexual copulation, to to lust in an objectifying manner. They turned men and women into objects and removed openness and genuine intimacy from courtship to the point that men don't say it, but when they, in many cases, men will be thinking of other things during an act, the whole thing has been corrupted. And the last but not least, when we talk of self-stimulation uh, or stimulation, They've turned that into the self-addiction, the selfishness, the addiction to self. How often do you hear people say, well, I've gone to this, I've done the ashram, I've done the course, I've done this, I've done that, I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. Self-addiction. They say, well, I'm working on myself. But really, it is an addiction to self. So here we see an overlay. The mind virus, ego, cloaking our primordial emotions. So now the question is, what does virtue mean in relation to ego? What does virtue mean in relation to emotion? And how can this help us today with the issues we face? Well, the issue is this. There is a way to live our lives authentically, and in the present moment. And in fact, the only way to disarm ego is to be in what we perceive to be the present moment. And there are a series of emotions and states of mind that allow us to be authentic. It doesn't mean we're goody two-shoes. It doesn't mean that we deny ourselves pleasures and stimulation. Far from it. In fact, the base emotion is pleasure not lust 
not selfishness, pleasure. When you go out into a sunny day and have the sun on your face, it's pleasurable. When you scratch your back, it's pleasurable. When you eat an ice cream, it's pleasurable. When you eat a burger, it's pleasurable. There is nothing negative about pleasure. It is the first thing. It's a sense. It's a feeling. It's a positive feeling. And then from that, we build. The next is respect. Respect, reflecting a word and an awareness and an interest and a curiosity of the world we see. Respectare, I see. That is the word respect. Spect, spectare, spectacles. Glasses, see. Respect, I see. Awareness. As a base chakra. So, pleasure, respect. I see the world around me. Not saying I make a judgment. Not saying, no, I won't do that. It's just simply saying, look at the world. Look at it. See it. Don't hide. See it for what it is. The next is honesty. That's honesty to yourself. That's not honesty to others. That's honesty to yourself. If you... And I, and I laughed when I realized this in my life. If you are not a sociopath and totally dominated by ego, where you believe your own lies, then if you lie, you have to remember two things, the truth and the lie, which is why the best liars are sociopaths. The president, the current president, is totally ruled by ego. He believes his own truth. He only remembers one thing, the lie, but he believes it to be true. So honesty is being true to yourself. And that's the second chakra, the, the center of the intestines, to feel that honesty. And that honesty and being true to yourself also gives you an ability to be intuitive again, to sense things. See, what ego wants to do is cut off your higher self. If you cut off your higher self, you cut off your intuition. Bad things happen in your life because you make bad choices. Why? Because you've cut off your intuition. If you want your intuition back, be honest to yourself. Why are you doing this? What are you seeking? Be true. That's all. Enthusiasm is the next. And enthusiasm is the third chakra, centered around the heart. Euphoria, true intention, to love life. And enthusiasm, entheos, means come from in God, to be possessed by the spirit of God, to be possessed by the spirit of life. That's the meaning of enthusiasm. To be enthusiastic. Look, we're all going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. We're all going to die at some point. But whilst we're here, let's at least be enthusiastic at the thing we're doing. If you like smoking cigarettes, be enthusiastic about that cigarette. Be conscious that you're smoking. Be true. You like it? Be true. Enjoy it. If you like eating burgers, enjoy it. But don't commit halfway. Be enthusiastic and feel the enjoyment of that. Now the fourth chakra, the throat, we find the word compassion, also known as empathy. You know, you, you, you may, I'm sure all of you hopefully have felt this, and I'm sure many of you have felt it many times, when we feel someone else's pain, our throat chokes up when we get emotional. When I, when I spoke about my father at the start of the call tonight, I choked up because I could feel the pain he went through and I miss him and I love him and I hope in my life I honour him. Compassion. So we've got pleasure, respect, honesty, enthusiasm, compassion. All present moment. All can be sensed, all can be felt. Not complex. I've got four more to go. Cheerfulness as the fifth. A face. If you wear a frown, then that's what you project. You know, when you go to court and they're saying all these terrible things about you, who said you have to go in there glum and looking like that they are winning? Cheerfulness. Cheerfulness doesn't mean that you're running around, you know, chuckling and laughing, but it also means that you're not walking through life with this frown. Cheerfulness is, is happiness. It's affection. It, it's saying... You know, life is what it is. Life has its ups and its, and its downs. The cheerfulness is infectious. The smile is infectious. Then we have discernment. 
the middle of the forehead, the hypothalamus. Discernment in knowing what is and what is not. Being able to see and to start to be detached from what we're doing, to, to be able to view ourselves objectively. And then we have bliss, the crown. When we get those rushes through our body, which I hope you do sometimes when you listen to Eucadia, we you listen to what we're saying. Bliss, the joy and the ecstasy as the seventh, the crown chakra. And the last, and certainly not the least, is love, the whole sense of love. When we are in the present moment and we sense all those emotions, those positive emotions as one, pleasure, respect, honesty, enthusiasm, compassion, cheerfulness, discernment, bliss, all the chakras all open. That is virtue. Virtue is living positive emotion. That's all it is, living positive emotion. And while people have different uh, in, in, interpretations on it, and uh, some will get into detail, and some will talk about colour, and I hope those things are fine. Colour is great, but no one can perceive colour, and colour is a very uh, personal experience. But here, in a very practical way, we see, as we learn who and what we are, as we identify the mind virus that for so long has said, you know what, I'm you. Well, no, you're not me. You're not me. I know you're not me because your agenda is different. Your agenda isn't to unite me, it's to divide me. And when you tell me you are me, I then go down the road and I do things that are divisive. You can't be me. You're something else. Understand that, that crazy dialogue that infuriating dialogue and now understand the cure, the remedy, the healing, pleasure, respect, honesty, enthusiasm, compassion, cheerfulness, discernment, bliss and love. And the exciting thing is, the really exciting thing is, when we talk about miracles and we talk about the future and we, and we look to the future and hope the future will be something better, what I've read from tonight is the canons of cognitive law. I've read the law. This is the law that's coming to being, the 22 books of canon law, this being the book of cognitive law. When finished, the law itself will help you. The law itself will provide the answers. You will not need me or anyone else if you believe in the law, if you believe the law is something that can stand as a being, as a sense, as a truth, as a presence above and beyond and that you truly believe it can be restored, it will be there to help. And that to me is a wonderful, wonderful hope to the future that the law will teach us, the law will help us, the law will guide us because that's exactly how I was brought up to believe. I, brought up, I was brought up to believe that that is actually what the law is about to teach, to help, to guide. Not simply to bark at us these commands and not explain to us why. Why? Well, let me wrap up my chat before questions and I, and I do ask you if anyone wants to speak to go star eight, I think it is, or hash eight. Um, if I've made a mistake, it's either star or hash eight, which will put up a little balloon and it will tell me that you want to talk. And I look forward to that. But let me finish on this comment, virtue conquers peril. So my whole life, looking at different things and looking at I wanted to be different, my parents gave me a little crest when I was a kid. I said, this is the family crest. This is the motto that the family had for many, many centuries. And it was in Latin. It said, Vincent Pericula Virtus, Vincent Pericula Virtus. And it roughly translates as virtue conquers peril. And I've taken most of my life to realize the importance of that, the simplicity of that. When you stand as authentic and true, when you stand before...